things that are associated uh, with the credit uh, exposure some of the things uh, like uh, uh, expected expected uh, exposures effective expected exposures i'll bring so many terms now positive uh, expected exposure expected negative exposure potential future exposure there are so many such terms that are coming to come up for us and uh, we will try to see how do we look at the credit exposure for different kinds of positions right from uh, bonds to options to swaps so for different kinds of positions what would be the credit exposure uh, look like and uh, we are also talking about uh, a term called potential future exposure where i would be uh, using a concept uh, similar to that of uh, value at risk to compute the potential future exposure and uh, so how it uh, helps in uh, credit risk uh, calculations and uh, sometimes the exposure what are the various factors that are impacting the credit exposure we will be looking at uh, how the payment frequencies can uh, impact the credit exposure and also we are looking at uh, the exercise dates like options and all how do they impact the credit exposure and we are also uh, dealing with uh, the netting how does uh, netting impact the credit exposure also we whatever we have uh, discussed earlier something to do with the collateral how does uh, the how does the various uh, attributes uh, or uh, properties relating to the collateral how do they impact the credit uh, exposure and uh, and we will also uh, look at the key differences between the risk neutral uh, parameters which we generally uh, use in case of uh, arbitrage no arbitrage kind of positions versus the real world parameters we will discuss about uh, all these aspects in this uh, session so to just uh, get started with the same i would like to look at the various measurements associated with the credit exposure right the various uh, measures of credit exposure initially i would uh, like to look out for expected mark to market exposure see when i say expected one it is at a future date at a future date what is the expected value of a transaction so let's say this is today this is the future date and uh, probably let's say this uh, transaction is going to end here so on this date i want to now find out what is the value of this transaction means the present value of the future cash flows as on this particular date is what we are calling as the expected mark to market so today's value may be different from the expected mark to market value especially uh, if uh, the time periods are pretty large we see that uh, the current mark to market and expected mark to market will have quite different values on the same lines this is uh, another important word which is the expected exposure see when i am talking about uh, various uh, transactions some of them will have uh, a positive mtm some of them will have a negative mtm but if i am looking at overall if i am talking about expected uh, value then it is nothing but all the positives negatives uh, the positives are added negatives are subtracted and that is what will give me the resultant expected mark to market 
But when I am looking at uh, the expected exposure, if we are talking about the amount that could be lost, the amount that could be lost if there is a positive exposure on this date only, if there is a positive exposure and the party has defaulted. So, this number will always be higher than the expected value because in the expected, the positive and the negative, all of them are taken and the result is a net. Whereas, in case of uh, exposed, uh, expected exposure, we are only talking about a positive exposure and the counterparty defaulting. So, the amount that is uh, subjected to loss, if there is a positive exposure and the counterparty has defaulted. Then, on the similar lines, I want to talk about uh, the potential future exposure. This is an interesting part. Let's say, let's look at uh, a diagrammatic form. Okay, let me assume that this is the current value of a position as of today. What could happen? Let me take some future date like this. Right? As on this date, Probably from today it could increase. The value of the position could either increase, decrease, could go so high. The value of a position could even fall, could even fall. So, value of the positions could be anything as on this future date. Now, if you see whatever the possibilities that have come up, if I am trying to plot a frequency distribution for it, all I may get is a kind of a curve and wherever we are talking about positive exposure, so in all these uh, cases, the MTM is positive. In, in the ones that is above means compared to today's value, the value on that day is uh, higher, means it is a positive uh, mark to market value. So, uh, we are seeing that the positive mark to market value could be anywhere even up to here. So, this entire area is, uh, any point on this area is a representation of the, uh, the potential exposure in future. So, just to talk about the term potential future exposure, it is an estimate of this particular point. What is this point? Okay, once I try to plot a graph of the various exposures that can come up in future, I am talking about at some level of confidence, 95, 99, at some percentage level of confidence, what is the worst case loss that can occur? What is the, or probably I will call it as maximum, what is the maximum exposure that is there at certain confidence level. So, that is what is being called as uh, the potential future exposure. So, when we are uh, trying to plot a probabilistic uh, distribution kind of a graph, the one that is uh, in this area, any point on this area is uh, a mark of uh, exposure, uh, positive exposure in future. But of course, when I am using the word potential future exposure, I am majorly concentrating on at let us say 95 or 99 percent confidence level. What is the worst exposure? What is the maximum exposure that can come up at that particular confidence level? But if I am talking about even the extreme most, that is what we call as maximum PFP. Maximum potential future exposure is the highest value for a PFP in a particular period. So, probably if I say that, okay, from here it can go at the max up to here, this is what we call as the maximum PFP value. And 
This is where we see in terms of uh, exposures if we are seeing just as a graphical representation, let us say I want to look at uh, at different points in time the various exposures. The expected mark to market will always be in the center with positive as well as negative. Expected mark to market uh, will be this particular line. Whereas expected exposure because it contains only the positives and it does not include the negatives, this is what is the expected exposure which is a, a positive number and this entire area is a representation of positive exposures. So here somewhere I can find the potential future exposure and this is where I can think of finding the maximum PFE value. Now, this potential future exposure or the uh, expected uh, exposure, whatever it is. So, when I am talking about this particular word expected exposure, it keeps changing with time, right? Probably uh, it may, so uh, for different kinds of products, the shape of that uh, expected exposure will be different. So let's say if I am talking about uh, that expected uh, exposure, let's say uh, at time zero, it may be this much. After a certain time, it may be this much. So probably it may so happen that. Uh, during this maturity period, the expected exposure for uh, a particular type of security 